Minimum cost operations, a multi-phase greedy algorithm. As we've seen more and more examples of greedy algorithms, we've come to appreciate that there can be considerable diversity in the way they operate. Many greedy algorithms make some sort of an initial ordering decision on the input, and then process everything in a one-pass fashion. Others make more incremental decisions, still local and opportunistic but without a global plan in advance. In this section, we consider a problem that stresses our intuitive view of greedy algorithms still further. The problem, the problem is to compute a minimum cost operations of a directed graph. This is essentially an analog of the minimum spanning tree problem for directed rather than undirected graphs. We will see that the move to directed graphs introduces significant new complications. At the same time, the style of the algorithm has a strongly greedy flavor since it still constructs a solution according to a local myopic rule. We begin with uh, the basic definitions. Let g equals to ve be a directed graph in which we've uh, distinguished just one road r in v as a root. In operations with uh, respect to r, is essentially a directed spanning tree rooted at R. Specifically, it is a subgraph T equals to VF such that T is a spanning tree of G if we ignore the direction of the edges, and uh, there is a path in T from R to each other node V in V if we take a direction uh, of edges into account. Figure 4.18 gives an example of two different operations in the same directed graph. There is a useful equivalent way to characterize operations, and uh, this is as follows. 4.34 The subgraph T equals to VF of G is an operations with respect to root R if and only if T has no cycles and for each node v not equals to r, there is exactly one h in f that enters v. Proof if t is an operations with root r, then indeed every other node v has exactly one h entering it. This is simply the last h on the unique r v path. Conversely, suppose t has no cycles, and each node v not equals to r has exactly one entering h. In order to establish that t is an operations, we need only show that there is a directed path from r to each other node v. Here is how we constructed such a path. We start at v and repeatedly follow edges in the backward direction. Since t has no cycles, we can never return to a node we've previously visited, and thus this process must terminate. But R is the only node without incoming edges, and so the process must, in fact, terminate by reaching R. The sequence of nodes thus visited yields a path in the reverse direction from R to V. It is easy to see that just as every connected graph has a spanning tree, a directed graph has an operations rooted at R, provided that R can reach every node. Indeed, in this case, the edges in a breadth-first search tree rooted at R will form an operations. 4.35 A directed graph G has an operations rooted at R, even only if there is a directed path from R to each other node. The basic problem we consider here is the following. We are given a directed graph G equals to VE with a distinguished root node R and with a non-negative cost C greater than or equals to zero on each H, and we wish to compute an operations rooted at R of minimum total cost. We will refer to this as an optimal operations. We will assume throughout that G 
at least has an obsolescence rooted at R. By 4.35, this can be easily checked at the outset. Designing the algorithm. Given uh, the relationship between obsolescence and the trees, the minimal cost obsolescence problems certainly has a strong initial resemblance to the minimal spanning tree problem for undirected graphs. Thus, it's natural to start by asking whether the ideas we developed for that problem can be carried over directly to this setting. For example, must uh, the minimal cost operations contain the cheapest edge in the whole graph? Can we safely delete the most expensive edge on the cycle, confident that it cannot be in the optimal operations? Clearly, the cheapest edge E in G will not belong to the optimal operations if E enters the root, since uh, the operations we are seeking is not supposed to have any edges entering the root. But even if the cheapest edge in G belongs to some operations rooted at R, it need not belong to the optimal one, as uh, the example of uh, figure 4.19 shows. Indeed, including the edge of cost 1 in figure 4.19 would prevent us from including the edge of cost 2 out of the root R. Since there can only be one entering edge per node, and uh, this in turn would force us to incur an unacceptable cost of 10 when we included uh, one of uh, the other edges out of R. This kind of argument never clouded our thinking in the minimal spanning tree problem, where it was always safe to plunge ahead and include the cheapest edge. It suggests that finding the optimal operations may be a significantly more complicated task. It's worth noticing that the optimal operations in Figure 4.19 also includes the most expensive edge on a cycle. With a different construction, one can even cause the optimal operations to include the most expensive edge in the whole graph. Despite this, it is possible to design a greedy type of algorithm for this problem. It's just that our myopic rule for choosing edges has to be a little more sophisticated. First, let's consider a little more carefully what goes wrong with the general strategy of including the cheapest edges. Here is a particular version of this strategy. For each node v not equals to r, select the cheapest edge entering v breaking ties arbitrarily, and let f star be this set of n minus 1 edges. Now consider the subgraph v f star, since we know that the optimal operations needs to have exactly one edge entering each node v not equals to r, and v f star represents the cheapest possible way of making these choices. We have the following fact. 4.36. If v f star is an operation, then it is a minimal cost operation. So the difficulty is that v f star may not be an operation. In this case, 4.34 implies that v f star must contain a cycle C, which does not include the root. We now must decide how to proceed in this situation. To make matters somewhat clearer, we begin with the following observation. Every operation contains exactly one edge entering each node v not equals to r, so if we pick some node v and subtract a uniform quantity, from the cost of every edge entering v, then the total cost of every operation changes by exactly the same amount. This means, essentially, that the actual cost of the cheapest edge entering v is not important. What matters is the cost of all other edges entering v relative to this. Thus, let yv denote the minimal cost of any edge entering v. For each edge e equals to uv, with cost CE greater than or equal to 0, we define its uh, modified cost CE prime to be CE minus YV. Note that since CE is greater than or equal to YV, all the modified costs are still non-negative. More crucially, 
Our discussion motivates the following fact. 4.37. T is an optimal operations in G subjected to costs. The set C E if and only if it is it is an optimal operations subjected to the modified cost costs C E prime. The set of C E prime. Proof. Considering the arbitrary operations T, the difference between its cost with the costs the set C and the cost the set C prime is exactly the summations for Y V summing for all V not equals to R, that is the summations of C E summing for all E in T minus the summations of C E prime summing for all E in T is equals to the summations of Y V summing for all V not equals to R. This is because an operation has exactly one edge entering each node V in the sum, since uh, the difference between the two costs is independent of the choice of the operations T, we see that T has minimal cost subjected to the set C E, even only if it has minimal cost subjected to the set C E prime. We now consider the problem in terms of the costs, the set C E prime. All the edges in our set F star have cost zero under these modified costs. And so if V F star contains a cycle C, we know that all edges in C have cost zero. This suggests that we can afford to use as many edges from C as we want, consistent with producing an operations, since including edges from C doesn't raise the cost. Thus our algorithm continues as follows. We contract C into a single supernode, obtaining a smaller graph G prime equals to V prime E prime. Here V prime contains the nodes of V minus C plus a single node C star representing C. We transform each H E in E to an H E prime in E prime by replacing each end of E that belongs to C with a new node C star. This can result in G prime having parallel edges, uh, that is, edges with uh, the same ends, which is fine. However, we delete self loops from E prime, edges that have both ends equal to C star. We recursively find an optimal operations in this smaller graph G prime, subjected to the costs the set C prime. The operations returned by this recursive call can be converted into an operations of G by including all but one H on the cycle C. In summary, here is the full algorithm. For each node, V not equals to R, let YV be the minimal cost of an H entering node V. Modify the costs of all H's E entering V to C E prime equals to C E minus YV. Choose uh, one zero cost H entering each V not equals to R, obtaining a set F star. If F star forms an operations, then return it. Else, there is a directed cycle C, which is a subset or equals to F star. Contract C to a single supernode, yielding a graph G prime equals to V prime E prime. Recursively find an optimal operations V prime F prime in G prime with the costs, the set C prime. Extend V prime F prime to an operation V F in G by adding all but one H of C. Analyzing the algorithm. It is easy to implement this algorithm so that it runs in polynomial time, but does it lead to an optimal operation? Before concluding that it does, we need to worry about the following point. Not every operation in G corresponds to an operation in the contracted graph G prime. Could we perhaps miss the true optimal operations in G by focusing on G prime? What is true is the following. The operations of G prime are in one-to-one -one correspondences with the operations of G that have exactly one H entering the cycle C, and uh, these corresponding operations have the same cost 
with the respected to the set C prime. Since C consists of zero cost edges, we say that an edge E equals to U V entering C enters C if V belongs to C but U does not. So to prove that our algorithm finds an optimal obsolescence in G, we must prove that G has an optimal obsolescence with exactly one edge entering C. We do this now. 4.38. Let C be a cycle in G consisting of edges of cost 0 such that R is not equal to C. Then there is an optimal obsolescence rooted at R that has exactly one edge entering C. Proof. Consider an optimal obsolescence T in G. Since R has a path in T to every node, there is at least one edge of T that enters C. If T enters C exactly once, then we are done. Otherwise, suppose that T enters C more than once. We show how to modify it to obtain an obsolescence of no greater cost that enters C exactly once. Let E equals to AB be an edge entering C that lies on as short a path as possible from R. This means, in particular, that no edges on the path from R to A can enter C. We delete all edges of T that enter C, except for the edge E. We add in all edges of C, except for the one edge that enters B, the head of edge E, let T prime denote the resulting subgraph of G. We claim that T prime is also an obsolescence. This will establish the result since the cost of T prime is clearly no greater than that of T. The only edges of T prime that do not also belong to T have cost zero. So why is T prime an obsolescence? Observe that T prime has exactly one edge entering each node V that equals to R and uh, no edge entering R. So T prime has exactly n minus one edges. Hence, if we can show there is an R V path in T prime for each V, then T prime must be connected in an undirected sense and hence a tree. Thus, it would satisfy our initial definition of an operations. So consider any node V not equals to R. We must show there is an R V path in T prime. If V is in C, we can use the fact that the path in T from R to E has been preserved in the construction of T prime. Thus, we can reach V by first reaching E and then following the edges of the cycle C. Now suppose that V is not equal to C and let P denote the R V path in T. If P did not touch C, then it still exists in T prime. Otherwise, let W be the last node in P intersect C, and let P prime be the subpath of P from W to V. Observe that all the edges in P prime still exist in T prime. We have already argued that W is reachable from R in T prime since it belongs to C. Concatenating this path to W with the subpath P prime gives us a path to V as well. We can now put all the pieces together to argue that our algorithm is correct. 4.39. The algorithm finds an optimal obsolescence rooted at R in G. Proof. The proof is by induction on the number of nodes in G. If the edges of F form an obsolescence, then the algorithm returns an optimal obsolescence by 4.36. Otherwise, we consider the problem with the modified costs, the set C prime, which is equivalent by 4.37. After contracting a zero cost cycle C to obtain a smaller graph G prime, the algorithm produces an optimal obsolescence in G prime by the inductive hypothesis. Finally, by 4.38, there is an optimal obsolescence in G that corresponds to the optimal operations computed for G prime.